Hey everyone, thank you so much for stopping back by. I am Tia and today we are doing a video I've already done in its entirety. I filmed this video three or four days ago and as I washed my face and prepared for bed, I let it upload to YouTube and as it uploaded, I saw that my 15 minute video was only uploading eight minutes. And then when I played my video on my device, I saw I could only play up to eight minutes of my video. So I do believe I had a corrupted file. May this video go much better than that night because I did not want to save the file. I was just thoroughly frustrated and I deleted it. Um, there was no salvaging it other than maybe slicing it up, redoing everything like I did today and pasting it together. But you all know how I feel about editing. So there's that. So I'm going to tell you a couple of quick things and then we're going to get into why you're here. First things first, I'm dressed very vintage today. This is actually how I like to do my makeup and my clothes, but I don't do it every day. Um, but it's fitting for this video, so I figured I'd do it for this video. On my lips, I have a very nice true red and it is a red in this lip trio by Jasmine Beauty. This is the color Beach Please. These are all liquid products. This is a liquid lipstick. These are two liquid glosses, soft serve and Kool-Aid. And you can combine them however you want. This though is the one that I'm wearing right now by itself. And again, the color name is Beach Please. Press it. It goes kind of matte, but not super duper matte and definitely not drying, not sticky or tacky feeling very comfortable on the lips. Love this formula. Um, I don't know if it's budge proof. I haven't drank anything tonight, but I'm not really worried about that because I just love the color. So it really doesn't matter if it budges or not. I'll eat carefully. So anyway, I will put the link to this in the description box because this product is um, just one variation of their trios. They have other shades. And if you want to see me swatch all three, you can go to my bean box video because this came in a bean box recently and I did the unboxing and swatches in that video. I will link that overhead for your convenience. Now, I'm dressed vintage and looking kind of vintage-esque because this is a series about vintage perfume. So previously I did a, a video, well, you all know I do perfume videos, but previously I did a video and I highlighted a vintage fragrance that was worn by none other than Miss Lady Day, Billie Holiday. And the scent was Emerald, beautiful powdery scent, very feminine, very vintage, but so soft and so unassumingly elegant. Love that fragrance, did a video on it, and told you all about it, as well as those, um, the notes, the prices, all of that good stuff. I will link that video overhead for your convenience but yeah that's one you absolutely should check out because it kind of sets you up for what we're doing here but you don't have to see it just yet if you don't want to we can start here with taboo now let me show you the box and that's what the bottle looks like i'm going to take the bottle out in a minute taboo is made by the dana company and the fragrance was formulated in, I believe, 1932. So this is an old scent, almost 100 years old is this formulation. So first things first, let's talk about Taboo. It was the favorite fragrance of none other than Dorothy Dandridge herself. And for that reason, I was willing to try it. Now, I will put the link I used to purchase this in the description box. But I will tell you, this is a fairly inexpensive perfume for the amount of product you get. This bottle is 2.3 fluid ounces, which is equivalent to 68 milliliters. I got it for $12 or $13. That, that was all I paid. When I last checked, it was about $23 to purchase the same size bottle. So... The prices absolutely fluctuate depending on when you buy it. You may get a little lucky or not. I don't know. But still, even at anything under $30, it's fairly inexpensive 
for perfume. And when I describe some of what's going on with this, you'll understand why I'm saying even at the higher price, it's still a good price for the perfume. So first impressions, it's a gorgeous amber color. The plastic cap is what it is. It looks very vintage. Actually, if you look at it, it looks very Art Deco. This whole uh, bottle shape very much gives me Chrysler building, um, which is interesting. But you take it off and you got all of this product. And let me tell you, uh, and I'm going to go through the same process I did in the last video. I don't love it. <laughs> I don't love it. I think it's beautiful. And I love that Dorothy loved it, but loved it, but I don't love it. However, that doesn't mean I'm not going to wear it. Follow me here. I promise it makes sense. So for this scent, it has, I think, over 15 notes that you can pick up in it. Um, I went to Fragrantica. I'll put all of these scent notes in the description box for your convenience. Uh, but Fragrantica named at least 15 notes or so. And funny enough, most of the notes are notes that I absolutely love. So the question is, why don't I love this scent? I'll tell you in a second. Let's go over the notes first. So the top notes are spice, orange, coriander, neroli, and bergamot, okay? The mid notes are clove, ylang-ylang, rose, jasmine, and narcissus. And the base notes are amber, civet, benzoin, sandalwood, patchouli, musk, oak moss, vetiver, and cedar. So you got a lot of scents going on. When I smell it though, first thing I get hit with is spice very spicy. It is absolutely an oriental style scent. So it's got a lot of spice and a lot of warmth. Um, I do not smell those lighter notes that are mentioned in the top notes like the orange and the rolly, maybe a little bit of bergamot, but mainly what I get is spice. And then when you get to those mid notes, you've got the clove. I don't smell any of those flowers, though I will tell you this, I'm not a fan of a lang, -a -lang and I do think I'm picking that up when I smell this. And then for the base notes, absolutely amber. I smell sandalwood. I smell the patchouli a little bit. Um, and the musk, I smell those, right? I even smell the cedar too. Yeah, actually, I smell the cedar a lot as I smell this a little bit more. So the question is, this has at least five of my top favorite notes for a perfume. So why don't I like it? It's a case of too much is too much. You know, it's doing too much. However, I'm still going to wear it. And the reason why is because there's something very special about this perfume that I don't want to miss out on by not wearing it. Normally, my favorite fragrances tend to be um, a little spicy but floral and fairly soft and very, I don't want to say unassuming, but absolutely kind of low key. Like my favorite fragrances are usually like a musk with a little bit of a flower essence, like a rose on it. Um, I remember the Bi, uh, Bi Rosie Jane perfumes, which I'll link overhead. I really liked those because they were really low key perfumes, but very nice smelling. So what I notice is this is, she's loud, y'all. She is loud. She's absolutely loud. This is a fragrance. I want you to look at this bottle and look at the color of the formula. This was about the same color as Obsession. It's loud like Obsession. It's one of those scents you spray it in the air and you let it fall over you. Yeah, it's like that. So if it's loud and it's, you know, can be overpowering and it's too much and I don't love it because it's too much. Why am I wearing it, right? Or why am I going to choose to wear it? Because this fragrance best embodies the energy of taking up space and showing up for yourself. One of the things I notice is that your fragrance tells people a lot about you. And sometimes you wear a fragrance that whispers because you kind of whisper. You're kind of low-key. I am going into a phase of life where I need to be a little more embodied, if that makes sense. A little 
bolder, a little more, not necessarily assertive, but definitely I need more presence. And I feel like fragrance is a good tool in supporting you in that way. So this is what I'm going to wear because honestly, even though she's loud and even though she's got way too much going on, the actual scent isn't bad except for that Alang Alang. I don't like that, but everything else is okay. And it's not like this makes me nauseous or this makes me physically uncomfortable. It's more of an emotional reaction to it. And I can see why Dorothy loved this. It's absolutely flirtatious. It is hubba hubba sexy. Like this is just, this is, I can see why she liked it. When this was formulated by the Dana company, their inspiration was the scent a prostitute would wear. That blows my mind. Um, <laughs> because it's not what you hear often. You don't hear a fragrance company saying, yes, we want the essence of Harlot in a bottle. But the truth is, that is an aspect of feminine expression. So it makes sense that someone would try to bottle it. And taboo is what they came up with. So I will wear it still. Um, and I will wear it lightly, unless I just feel really inspired to do something a little bit heavier. Um, part of me is like, yeah, wear it just for the fact that I don't like to be wasteful, but also wear it because it's leading me to this next phase where I am showing up a little bit louder, a little more present than I had been before and a little more noticeable than I had been before. It's the red lip. So anyway, that is a long and short of taboo. Um, let's see, I told you about where you can buy it. You'll see in the description box, I told you about the price fluctuation. It happens. The notes in the description box again, why I'm going to wear it, even though I'm not absolutely head over heels for it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to having some fun with this and telling you some of my adventures as I wear this, because I feel like it's going to be a bit of a talisman for me. I don't know why. I think it's going to give me a little bit of luck or something, but... <laughs> That's it for Taboo. I would spritz it and spray it on my skin right now, but it's late, you guys, and I don't want to smell it all night, but fun fragrance. If you like spicy fragrances, this is a good one. Um, this one, if you're more like me ordinarily, this is not a daytime fragrance unless you go super duper light in your application because, like I said, she's loud, but um, perfect for cooler weather, but don't be deceived. They've got a lot of floral notes mixed in that could play really well on those kind of hazy summer nights where things are kind of hot still um, and a little humid. Yeah, you could still wear this. Um, but if we're talking about seasons specifically, this is more of a winter fragrance for sure. Um, definitely spicy enough for the coldest days. So that's it. And I did it in less time than the last video. Look at that. Here's hoping this one goes up without a hitch. Hope you all are doing great. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the uh, comment section below. If you have any other recommendations for perfumes to try, please let me know. But just know I'm not getting joy by Jean Patou. Not because I have an issue with it. I don't. I've never even smelled it. But it's really hard to find, you guys. If I can find it at a reasonable price and of reasonable quality, I'll go ahead and get it and just surprise you with a review. But please don't ask me to seek it out. I really just want Joy to kind of cross my path. I know all the stars loved it, but Joy is rare and hard to find now. And I don't want to make you any promises. So anyway, that's it. Have a great rest of your week and I'll talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.